Hey everybody, it's Ken and Daniil. Hello. And I'm excited to have Chad Griffiths here. Chad is an expert in industrial, and as you guys know, we try to cover all aspects on this real estate channel. Uh, what I really like is you've been an active investor since 2014. Um, let's talk about when you first came in the industry, because at that time, uh, real estate was a bit in flux, right? Yeah, so I started in 2005. That's when I first became a broker. And that there, that was a pretty good time, but it was right before the Great Recession in 2007. So I had a little bit of time to get my feet wet. And then all of a sudden, we're into the worst recession that people had seen in decades. Uh, so it, it was really that feet to the fire kind of moment. You know, of, of all these different asset classes, industrial has really outperformed multifamily, office, retail, and single family. Uh, what, isn't that right? Yeah, they, I, I think multifamily is still a very great investment choice as well. And I think there's that has performed very well. I'd love to get your opinion on what that looks like over the next year or two. Uh, but multifamily's done well. Office is, is, looks very bleak right now. That's an asset class I certainly wouldn't be interested in. Retail's plugged along. Industrial's just been the darling of the of the whole commercial real estate industry for those reasons that you mentioned. Everybody wants distribution space. 15 years ago, we didn't see a whole lot of industrial. It was always tended to be tucked away in, in industrial parks, out of the public purview. They didn't really see it a whole lot. It wasn't talked about in the news. Well, fast forward to today and where you were in Phoenix, I was just in Phoenix a couple months ago. There's industrial going up absolutely everywhere. Main roads, near the airport, on highways. You're seeing these massive distribution centers for all for the reason that you mentioned, that last mile delivery. Everybody needs warehouse space to fulfill these orders, to have it ready to go when customers order it. And then you add on even the onshoring or reshoring effect right now, where there's a lot of interest and appetite to bring manufacturing back stateside, uh, away from some of the Asian countries that had historically dominated that manufacturing side. So you add in this huge race to build as much distribution space as we can, can and then also add in some reshoring of manufacturing jobs. And that's where we're seeing these big EV car manufacturers, these big ba uh, battery plants, even traditional manufacturing, that's now adding even more stimulus to the industrial market. So it, it's really a confluence of conditions where industrial has gone from almost kind of being like a bit of a cottage industry, even though it's very large, it was out of the, the minds of most people, even most institutional investors. But today, everybody seems to want a piece of industrial. Uh, so it's, it's crazy. In 15 years, it's gone from being very not known at all to now a sudden being very popular. Yeah. How did you um, first get into industrial? Like, how did you decide on that? Yeah, that's a great question, Daniela. And, and funny enough, it was purely by accident. So I had wanted to get into commercial real estate. Uh, and at the time, I when I thought of commercial real estate, I thought of skyscrapers or like these big sexy office towers or shopping malls that are very glamorous with like the, the well-known names in there. That's what I thought of. And it just so happened that the company that I interviewed uh, was heavily focused on industrial and take me, taking me back 18 years now, I, ha I knew very little about what industrial was either. Uh, one of the funniest stories that I heard, just as a quick side note on that, is that uh, a guy was talking to me about industrial and he said, the only thing I know about industrial real estate is when I make a wrong turn off the highway and I end up in an industrial park and I'm just trying to find my way back to the main road. That was me. Like that, that I knew very little about it, but just the people that uh, were in, at my office, the, that was the specialty. Uh, it was a suburban office that was in an industrial building, uh, still at that same company today, uh, a partner at the company, and I actually own the building now. So it's kind of funny how I knew nothing about industrial real estate, uh, but having gotten into it and worked into it and just seeing all the different facets to it and how how special the industry was because it, it works out of the spotlight and just seeing all the different companies and the wheels of commerce, uh, I guess is how you could, you could look at it. I just became so fascinated with it that that's why I've spent my entire career there. I've invested the majority of my net worth directly into industrial. I talk about industrial all the time, but it was purely by accident. If I wouldn't have uh, taken a job at that first place that I started, I'd probably be working in the office market and complaining about that right now. Well, let's let's jump into some of the basics. You, you know, we, you, you know, I know there's distribution, manufacturing, flex space, and I think it can all get confusing. 
I mean, you know very specifically what those things are, but can you talk about you know, the industrial basics? If somebody's interested in getting into this space, um, what are some of the things that they should know? Yeah, and those are the three main categories that I'd say is that manufacturing, warehousing, and flex. So manufacturing, think of it as any building where things are made. The example that I like to give, and it's actually not far from where you guys are right now uh, in Idaho, is the uh, Boeing factory just outside of Seattle, a small town called Everett. So it's a 4 million square foot building, like an enormous building. Like to even, I, I've driven by it and to even think how large 4 million square feet is, is almost incomprehensible. Uh, but that's the only thing that they do in that building is all the raw materials come in, gets made, assembled, produced, screwed together. Ultimately, an airplane comes out the other end. So any building where things are made, that's manufacturing. The one that's more common right now uh, is a warehouse, anything where things are stored. So trucks come in, might it might be a 53-footer bringing in a, pa- a truck full of, of pallets. All the goods come off, they get repackaged, assembled, sent out in delivery vans. So a delivery package might come to my house from a delivery van. That product in the warehouse might stay in there anywhere from half an hour to years. But think of a warehouse as anything where things are stored. And then the other category is flex industrial, kind of a catch-all. So that's meant to describe any building zoned industrial used for other purposes other than manufacturing or warehousing. So I've seen all kinds of uses. The one building that that I own that, uh, that our office is in, there's a office user in there, our, our company. Well, so this building zoned industrial, it's just a, kind of on a major road in an industrial park. There's an office user. We have a flower store in there now. We have a hot tub uh, uh, showroom. We have a cabinet store and we have a store selling equestrian supplies for horse enthusiasts. So <laughs> like nothing in there is actually industrial, but it's an industrial building. Uh, and those ones are are becoming increasingly more popular because they can handle so many different types of uses. Art galleries, churches, self-storage, bottle depots, you name it. It's it's probably a good fit in, uh, in a flex industrial property. So what I also wanted to talk about on the flex space part, because I think the manufacturing space is, is pretty co- pretty simple to figure out and distribution is pretty. The flex space oftentimes has a front office to it as well. And I think that that adds a whole nother component. Like like my father, he was an HVAC contractor. So the front office, you know, he had his uh, office a manager in there and maybe a secretary or two and some accountants. And in the back, it's where they made, you know, all the stuff that they needed for the for the individual jobs. And then, of course, all the supplies would be delivered as well. But it never disrupted in the front office. And I, I, I feel like that is going to, you know those, those, those are um, you know those are just on fire right now. I mean, we, we you can't find any of those because because typically it's actually less than an office building from a rent standpoint, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, quite quite often. So just using some rough numbers, office is a bit different right now because there's a lot of vacancy, so landlords are being very aggressive to do deals. But let's just assume it was a normal office market to lease office space right now, by the time you pay your rent and your operating costs and your utilities, you're quickly in that 35 to $40 a square foot range. And in some big markets, it might even be double that, uh, but call it $40 a square foot for all your costs and for office space. Whereas you can go and rent a, a warehouse space and you're into it for $15, maybe 20 by the time you factor in uh, all your other costs, but all things being equal, you're probably half the price to be in an industrial building. And if you can utilize that back bay, like your your dad would have with his HVAC business, and he could park some trucks in there or some equipment or something that he was working on, you can't do that in an office building. So it, it has become very attractive for users that that want to take advantage of that and also get cheaper rents. And I I completely agree with that point you made. Though that small bay industrial inventory is very difficult to find. It's very difficult to find to lease, and it's even more challenging to find ones to buy. But that inventory has been relatively fixed for a long period of time because most of the new inventory that's been added has been that big box industrial, like the million square foot building to handle Amazon and FedEx and and the big three PLs. That smaller inventory hasn't caught up, uh, but there's still a considerable amount of demand. So personally, that's an area that I'm hugely interested myself to invest in. Where can people find you and what's the best way to reach you? If you just go at industrialize, 
uh, that takes you to my YouTube page. Again, thanks for your time. Thanks for being on the channel. And thanks for having such great information. Congrats on your success. Much appreciated, Kendon. Thank you very much for having me on.